very much for the for the invitation. Uh, this is really um, it's. I mean, I'm, I'm, when I look at the program, um, the talk following my talk, um, the talk you have to, talks you have tomorrow, and the talks you have next week is all very thrilling. It's a bit of a pity that this came on such a short notice. Um, so I, I s kind of have the impression that um, I. Um, uh, well, I, I hope this is um, this 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 makes sense for you. What I'm trying to do here is 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 contemplate a bit about bilingual education in the specific Turkish case, like in the case of Turkey, and there's a bit of comparison also with Germany. I called the talk linguistic um, uh, uh, language policy and bilingual education. So first of all, you need to ah, there we go. Um, uh, what do I mean of language policy? I follow the um, the definition of um, Harald Schiffmann, which I find um, very clever because it tells us that language policy is not just what some ruling people tell us has to happen with regard to, um, let's say, multilingualism in a, in a society, but that, that language policy is something which a society kind of creates for itself and that it is a, the set of positions, principles and decisions reflecting that community's relationship to its verbal repertoire and communicative potential. And in the case of Turkey and also in the case of Germany, of course, this verbal repertoire and communicative potential is consists of many languages, is multilingual. Um, my starting point um, is uh, is a starting point which I would actually like to sort of enlarge a bit more, but I, I thought about it this morning whether I should, but I decided not to. Um, starting point in Turkey, a significant number of children which start school have a family, langu family language different from Turkish. That's the Turkish Turkey's case. These children are in danger of low educational success, not only, but also due to insuff insufficient educational support and the development of the second language, Turkish. And this is um, when you um, sort of look at the um, the publications of the E Tim Reformu um in the last couple of years. And I think there's one um, issue from 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 from. Um, Team Reform here, here as well, which I think they have very, very value dates about um, educational success in Turkey, and it makes sense to sort of critically read them. And what you can draw from this is that there must be some kind of relationship between um, insufficient educational support uh, or low educational success and insufficient educational support in the development of the second language, Turkish. It's not said openly, but that's how it looks like. But we can come back to that, of course. Now, the current legal situation in Turkey is pretty clear. I do not need to say much about it. Um, what I think is important to note is that there is a growing public discussion in Turkey also about the relationship between educational failure and monolingual habitus of the institutions and their agents. Now, the Social linguistic situation, um, as it is in Turkey, but I think also in Germany, but to a different extent, in my eyes, can be um, captured with the term register. Register is the practice of language use formed by social context. Practice of language use, for example, formed by regional context would be a dialect. Um, a register is something which is formed by social context, and I um, base my assumptions about register on on um, uh, uh, on Otsmas, who makes a distinction between three, let's say, um, social domains um, which shape made like three major registers. Of course, we can go into details here, and, um, uh, but anyway. We can start with these three domains. The first being informal private, that is the register used in the family, in the peer group, in social network at micro or meso level, spoken level. The second register is the informal public, the market, if you want to put it that way. That is the, the way people 
use language and the languages they choose between different social groups in public space and the market and cooperation and trade and also written in particular in social media not media media sorry <laughs> there was one media too much um, and the third register is that which is formal public which is um, the language the practice of language use in government administration education science the institutions of the society where the society let's say kind of institutionalize itself um, in the form of a graph we can look at this the, uh, in this way and when we look at the languages used in these different social contexts the registers we see in um, public former registers it is oriented the language use is very much oriented towards standard Turkish and the written language use is written standard Turkish when we look at the informal public register um, we have regional varieties of spoken Turkish being used in certain areas, also regional variety of other spoken languages, written media standard Turkish, but also an emergence of media in certain other language, emerging standards. And I look particularly at, um, at Kurmanji here. Um, and then when we look at the, in the, into the informal private register, regional varieties of spoken Turkish and of many, many, many other spoken languages are used in the families, of course. Um, and there's a couple of questions of functionality, variety, and attitude that arise from the social linguistic situation. First of all, a restricted functionality of written standard and minority languages due to the social linguistic situation. Then, a high dialectal variety of minority languages in Turkey due to restricted functionality of written standard, a low status of the minority languages due to legal situation, monolingual habitus, due to restricted functionality because of equation with weak socioeconomic situation of speakers maybe and maybe also the speakers themselves have this approach to their own language but this may be and this is I think this is a very very important point this may be different in different geographical regions of Turkey so in the south uh, southeast and I, I think this this uh, article by by Sheriff Dirinj is very valuable here he's, he's, he's I, I think he's not here today um, this article by 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 Sheriff about the different um, um, what's what was the title of the article one language two context Kurdish and Bakur and in Western Turkish metropolises um, where you see very much different, strong differences with regard to the functionality of the minority language um, uh, Kurmanji, and this is this is this is particular in the Turkish case I find when you compare it to Germany. And what we need here is research necessary, which is, is research that investigates variation and use of minority languages as well as attitudes of speakers. And the talk that follows my talk, um, I'm very much looking forward to that because I have the impression that it will be exactly about this. Now. Why then would we need bilingual education? Why do we want bilingual education? I think there's, been, there's mainly three, three reasons. One is issues of culture and identity versus the traumatic experience of linguism, forced language shift and its educational consequences. The second is transfer from L1 to L2, from L2 to L1. And um, the, 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 the talk by Ingrid and, and, and Irina, very, very very beautifully uh, showed us how much there is an interrelationship between competence in the languages of the of the of the multilingual people and um i um do a bit of um a, a, Advert, adver, advertisement of my own work here, together with um, a, a, a colleagues. Um, we just finished a, uh, a reanalysis of data from uh, about 10 years ago, where we did an um, investigation with Turkish Kurmanji bilingual children versus monolingual children, Turkish monolingual children um, in the first grade. And it was pretty clear that the bilingual children were better than the monolingual children um, with regard to certain phonological, um, a, a, a certain phonological awareness regarding syllable structures, Turkish syllable structures, the analysis of syllable structures and the consequences which this has for, um, uh, uh, for writing. And this is, so the bilingualism here really the Kurdish Turkish bilingualism here really is the resource and part of the acquisition of literacy also in Turkish. Now I think this is important. And then the third aim for, for, for bilingual education, of course, functional bilingualism on a high level, biliteracy and its societal gain. 
What is important here is, of course, the intertwining of these three. Uh, now, when you look at Turkey, at, 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 at Germany, what kind of education for bilingual children do we have? We have quite a heterogeneity of approach, soft submersion into L2, soft submersion into L2 supported with L1 education, and then bilingual education early but not totally exit of L1 coordinate or consecutive uh, literacy education, bilingual education late exit of L1, but that's pretty rare. Um, but note the differences between Germany and Turkey, and I already sort of tried to um, say something about that. In Germany, we have multilingualism in urban areas in particular as a result of recent exterior migration, like migration from abroad, if you want to put it that way. And we have more or less no regional concentration of particular languages. Now, when you look at Turkey, however, um, in Turkey, we can speak of multilingualism as part of the historical and cultural heritage. Um, there is a high, long, high number of bilingual speakers in particular geographic regions in Turkey. Um, and multilingualism in urban areas in the West is rather a result of more recent interior migration, um, except for non-Muslim um, uh, uh, minorities. So there's a difference between Germany and Turkey uh, uh, with regard to the let's say, the distribu distribution of, 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 of multilingualism. Um, and this may then lead to different aims in the occasion of bilingual children. In Germany, um, and I come back again to the like issues of culture and identity transfer between L1, L2, and the third is functional bilingualism on a high level biliteracy in a social society game. When, you look at, when we look at Germany, in Germany it is the aim one and two which are prevalent. The ultimate aim is the educational success in the second language German. So bilingual education is merely a vehicle in order to arrive at this ultimate, game, ultimate aim. Versus in Turkey, I think, all three aims may be prevalent, though possibly to a different extent, and this is the important thing, in different regions. Um, and the third, let me come back again to the third, function bilingualism on a high level, biliteracy and its societal gain, and the, mean, in the, in the meaning that um, uh, in certain regions of Turkey, bilingual education may lead to some kind of um, balanced bilingualism of the um, of the society. Um, so, there is a need to differentiate in the discussion. The aims and appropriate models of the education of bilingual children may differ according to different regions, according to different speaker communities. Thank you very much.